So this is VODcast 4. Uh, this will be the last one looking at the electromagnetic spectrum and what parts of that spectrum are studied uh, by astronomers. Uh, it's going to look at infrared, it's going to look at UV, it's going to look at X-ray and gamma rays, which are the high energy things. Uh, starting off with infrared, infrared is especially useful, especially useful for astronomers because everything that's above absolute zero is giving off infrared energy. Uh, but in particular, we look at star forming regions, uh, those nurseries, the nebula where stars are being born uh, as gas and dust collapse and heat up. And we also look at explosive events that are in very distant uh, galaxies. Uh, but the nice thing with it right, is that it passes through most of the gas and dust that's out there. Um, I'm giving an example of what we can see. So on the left here is a picture of visible light of an astronomer. Uh, his hands are in the bag and you can't see them because that light, the visible light that's giving off by its hands, is being blocked by the bag. But in infrared, all right, that black bag is actually transparent to infrared energy. And that uh, heat from his hand, you can easily see how many fingers he's holding up inside the bag. Uh, the same thing is true as it passes through gas and dust. Uh, this is an example of another uh, example here on Earth. Uh, this is, I can't remember exactly where, uh, it's a valley out in California. It was taken uh, many, many years ago. But this is in the visible light. Um, smog and uh, pollution from LA uh, goes down into this valley and it's very hard uh, to see the valley floor or into the background. But when taken from the exact same spot in infrared, right, that infrared penetrates through that and it like that gas and dust, that smog is not even there. Now, the only problem here with infrared astronomy is that unless you're really high up where it's very dry air, infrared uh, astronomy has to be done in space because it's absorbed uh, by the water vapor in the air. Uh, so here's an example of what we do see in space. This is Centaurus A, that galaxy that is an active galaxy with uh, a black hole feeding in the middle and in uh, radio waves we looked, there are jets shooting out this way. But what we want to pay attention to is this gas and dust lane here that's obscuring most of our view of the central core. Uh, this is invisible light, but in infrared, all that gas and dust, the infrared energy goes right on through. And it's easy for us to detect things going on inside of it. So that's one big reason why infrared uh, astronomy is so important. All right, it penetrates that gas and dust, but again, it must be done outside of the Earth's atmosphere for the most part because it's absorbed by the water vapor. Uh, another example, uh, may not be able to tell what constellation this is, but it's one of the most recognizable constellations up in the sky, but it's also an infrared. If we go back to visible, all right, well, there we go. You can see that this is Orion. You see Orion's belt right here. Uh, here's Betelgeuse, one of the largest uh, stars, uh, red supergiant close to its death, maybe supernova. Uh, you've got Rigel down here, a hot blue giant. And right here is Orion's nebula. If you go outside, uh, probably not tonight because it's mostly up in the winter, you'll see a little fuzzy spot down there. And that is uh, the nebula. Show you a picture here. Here it is. Now Orion's nebula, as you can see, uh, in visible light is very cool, but if we go back, it's also one of the brightest areas all right, in infrared because this is a baby uh, nursery for stars. Uh, there are a lot of stars in there, but it's not really visible in, in the visible light that we see because there's a lot of gas and dust. And if we zoom in on the center here, these are known as the trapezium stars. There are four very hot, very bright young stars in there that are making the rest of that nebula glow. Uh, hard to detect anything else, but if we go through infrared, all that gas and dust disappear. And we see that there are dozens of stars in there. UV astronomy is higher energy than the violet. And if you think back, cool stars are red. If you go even cooler, you'd be getting into the infrared. As you get hotter, you get towards the blue and the, ultra, and the violets. And if you go even hotter than that, you're going to get in the ultraviolet. 
Uh, UV astronomy is good for studying things that are very, very hot. So really hot, young stars, uh, galaxies that contain those very, very hot, young stars and are forming stars rapidly, and things known as quasars. Uh, a quasar is an extremely bright uh, star-like source of radio waves, and they are some of the oldest things known in the universe. We're going to get back to what a quasar uh, actually is a little bit later. Uh, this galaxy, it's M106, uh, you can see that it's kind of got a spiral in here in the central core. It's kind of faded out here, but if we look in ultraviolet, we can see out there on the edges where gas and dust uh, is actually from a collision causing uh, those, that gas and dust to uh, quickly create large hot stars. You can see that there are very new, very young, very hot stars out there. They're just being born. All right, and lastly, we've got high energies, X-rays and gamma rays. This is a visible image of the Carina Nebula that the Hubble Space Telescope took, and uh, looks great. Uh, a lot of color, a lot of gas and dust. But if we're interested in X-rays and gamma rays, X-rays and gamma rays are the most energetic and the hottest events uh, that occur in the universe. That's the objects that we study here. Things like we can study supernova remnants. We can study very young, very distant galaxies that are giving off a tremendous amount of energy. Um, but this, again, must be done in space because X-rays and gamma rays are very, very rare. And the uh, few that do uh, get to the Earth get absorbed by the atmosphere. So we have to go out into space and do this. And the fact that uh, makes it even worse is X-rays are known to go through objects and not necessarily be bent by them. So if you held up a glass, the uh, lens, or a mirror, they don't necessarily focus that energy. So they have to do some other things to get them to focus. But getting back to this, again, the high energy stuff that is found in here. If we look over in this little area here, this is a visible image of Eta Carina. Uh, it kind of looks like a supernova, but it's actually a false supernova. Uh, it didn't quite explode uh, the entire star. This is invisible. Uh, this could be one of the largest stars ever discovered. It's exceptionally hot, giving off lots of X-ray and gamma rays. And when we look at it, you see that very blue, very intense part of it. That is where we see the most X-rays and gamma rays coming from, and also in some of the gas and dust around it. Um, <clears throat> that should about do it. And you have a quiz over the infrared, the UV, and this high-energy stuff on Edmodo, so make sure you take that.